Hi everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I'm here today with Tuesday 10. Um, I am using some random papers, actually not from my normal Tuesday 10 bin, but from my bin of things I want to put into fairy journals and make um, ephemera from. So hopefully you're not completely worn out of fairies yet because I'm still in the throes of needing to make fairy ephemera for a little while longer. I am doing a bit of it off camera um, and I will be mixing in some other videos so that you're not like fully immersed in fairy fey world for too long. Um, but yeah, I, I have the paper here so I'll show you what it is and I actually think I have 11 pieces and not 10 but that's okay so the first thing is this um, this is from the front of um, the Fairyopolis book that I was working with it's like a fly paper or an end paper I thought I could still do something with the little fairies that are left over and then I have these these kind of, I'm gonna count as one they are two pieces of green paper that I tore from um, a book they, they're like um, they're the the first page of the book so this edge is all all gnarly and I have a bit of an idea then this is from a fairy book of course by Shirley Barber and I like this um, I think it's a nice like border this beautiful big page um, of like a monarch looking kind of fairy it's got some really beautiful um, stuff on the back too I was half contemplating if it would just be a nice thing to tuck in a journal as a full page but I, I might do something a little more with it then I have a piece of a, a coloring book that has a fairy on it and then I have three pages from this book tales of fairies and elves so this side has some cool fairies it's a whole story that I could honestly keep together as a story I could make like something maybe with it we'll see we'll see when we get there I'm, I'm delving too deep into my description of what I'm working with this is the other fly paper or, or end paper edge of that um fairytopia book and then this is a page from um a local a locally published book that um I that is also about fairies called Zelda and Esmeralda that I found while on vacation this is one page from the book um that is for another project I'll just get that out of the way so let's just jump into this um so I think I'll start with this big torn piece of paper because it is just catching on everything here and so I think what I want to do with this is just make clusters and these will be the focal point of the clusters so we'll just get them torn out um, and then I also have the option to make some tabs or something with this which might be a good idea let me just grab my punch um, because you know I'll be using this color theme in some of the journals so let's just go ahead and make some tabs with this leftover bit here Two. I'll probably get one more over here okay that's that this is kind of a thin little spot so today I'm filming it's actually it's not Tuesday that I'm filming it's actually Sunday um, I try to do extra filming on Sundays because they tend to kind of be my quiet days um, so today is definitely a quiet day it's raining outside and it's my first day of just kind of settling back in after my vacation and my show um, and I'm just I'm kind of wiped today I'm not gonna lie I'm very tired it was a lot of work and a long drive and um, you know all kind of stacked on top of other things that I was doing at the time so yeah I'm pretty happy that I'm done you know I've made the decision to take a little break from shows while my kids are young and I just want to take a little break from all that <laughs> so we have these three little tabs now that's good and then we've got five clusters that being said I'll tell you a little more about the show because it was a lot of fun had a great time actually 
Um, so I'm just going to get like a piece of book page here from my glue book that I'll probably use as a bit of a base for building clusters. And I definitely want to use scraps. My scraps are just, I mean, they're shameful. They're shameful. I need to go through and like deal with them. Today I came into my studio and like, I guess, you know, I'm just cutting up a lot of books and stuff right now. And like, I said to myself, if it's, if it's on the floor, it's going in the trash. And that's exactly where, well, the recycling, that's exactly where a bunch of paper bits ended up today. Cause I'm just like, why am I like this? I cannot <laughs> have 8 million scraps. It's, it's out of control. So let me just move up a little so that I know I'm in frame. Okay. And we're going to use the rest of this scrap. So we use that for three. Let's use the little, the little bitty one here. There we go. That's kind of neutral. We need more, more color and stuff. That's a swan. Hmm. I like this lily pad kind of thing over here. Yeah. So the um, the vacation in Muskoka was really relaxing and nice. I've got to say though, um, you know, because I always am very honest about things. <laughs> in life um it's a place that i can stay for a week but it's not a kind of place i'd want to live and that i guess is for a lot of reasons like it's solitude but like that's kind of all like you know there's only so much solitude i can i can deal with like i mean um i feel kind of like there's just not enough to do and i also think like it's it's an unfortunate thing in towns where there's not enough to do. I feel like their young people kind of suffer. And I had a few weird experiences. I'm not going to lie um, with young people up there. Like, I don't know, like at the beach, we have, my daughter always talks to everybody. Like she, um, doesn't really have a concept for people like their age and stuff so she'll talk to you if you are nine months old or 99 years old which is great but um every now and then it can get a little challenging when she just can't read the, the kind of type of person she's talking to and if they have like the capacity for you know young people and they understand that like there's certain things they shouldn't be talking about around little kids and yeah that I won't get into too much but there was a bit of that at the beach and I had to like wrap it up a bit because um yeah there was clearly a bit of an issue with a couple teenage girls and how they were talking and my daughter just you know it's I didn't expect them to have to deal with it in any way though because you know it's like they didn't ask for some toddler to come along and cramp their space <laughs> so like I dealt with it but then they kind of you know they were nice like they were nice enough people and I talked to them but then I was a little sad um for some of the conversation that we had uh because it was like one of those situations where I felt like they were telling me way too much personal information about themselves, maybe because they don't have anyone else to talk to. And unfortunately, because my kids were there, I wasn't in a position to be sort of a better confidant. Um, even though I'm like a stranger, I do try to like, you know, when kids are going to talk to you, try to give them an opportunity. So I did the best I could under the circumstances of what I could, you know, muster at the time. Um, it was basically, I mean, I'll tell you a little bit of the topic. It was basically about teen pregnancy and... Um, yeah not really having much support so i spent a bit of my time chatting about that with them and um you know giving some ideas about resources and what i could do you know as um, a stranger at the beach but yeah it's stuff like that that kind of makes me wary about like small towns because i grew up in one and i know that a lot of things are different and it's that whole thing about like, you know, everybody knows you by your first name. And um, there's a lot of um, issues with privacy and, you know, everything you do being kind of broadcast around your town. And I know how that can be because that's sort of how I grew up. I mean, I never, 
I was never in much trouble, but I did at one point in life experience bullying and someone who made up some things about me. And, you know, I think we all go through that as, as young people. Unfortunately, I really hope we're like in a world that is changing um, in some ways. And I do think we are. I often feel like kids these days are like a lot more empathetic than what I experienced as a kid who was a little bit weird and different and still pretty much I still am <laughs> so yeah it was a bit of an experience though so I you know I hope that they they figure it out and they do okay and I'm sure they will but I definitely worry I'm a very mother hen kind of person <laughs> so why do I want to do with this? Let's just set this little one over here and finish these. Okay, so we're getting there. A little bit of something more. Um, I need, I wonder if I have any good like little scraplets in here for this kind of thing. But yeah, I don't know. Stuff like that, like strange encounters typically always find me. I'm like the, I'm like the, the beacon for um, animals in distress and, um, strange encounters. <laughs> that is my, that's my life. I don't know. It's just always been that way. Um, okay. I like the blue on the edge of this book spine. It's really nice. It's a little piece of it on this one, maybe. You can get the book spine piece to show. Sort of, maybe like that. And then I think this one needs a little, they both need a little something. This one, maybe a little bit of silver. Could be cute in here. And over here, a bit of green. I see some green. Oh, that's a leaf, yay. That'd be perfect. But um, what else? Okay, so the show, the show was really, really good. I had um, some of my friends that I haven't seen for a long time that are that are in the fiber art world. I got to see, and that was awesome. And um, I really like the organizers of the show too. We're very on very friendly terms, and it was nice to see them. Um, a lot of new faces, lots of new people in the industry, which is always exciting. Happy to see more people, you know, engaged in getting in uh, knitting and crochet and fiber in general. Um, so that was fun. Hmm. And um, I did really well. Um, a lot of people were there to, to get my stuff and that was nice. I had a really, let's say, prosperous day and I had a lot less to bring home, which is even more exciting. <laughs> That's probably my favorite part of it all because I would like to size things down a little if I could. All right, let's start trying to glue these down and I'm gonna use the maybe top down sort of method here. So we'll just put some glue on here, plunk that right there. Just use art glitter glue. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then um, a few of my clients who I, I think have really been waiting for new stuff from me came to visit me from far away um, at the show, which was really nice. And I had a couple of really great customers that um, got my brain really working. Like I always, so it's hard to explain this, but hopefully, you know, if you've watched me for long enough, you'll understand some some degree what I'm talking about. So the the yarn that I make is, um, you know basically termed as art yarn that's the industry kind of term for it and so it's not you know everybody's cup of tea it is um you know the more creative end of the yarn world it's not something that is as basis as like you get a certain weight of yarn you have a pattern you complete a project um you know i do i do have a few patterns i've designed that i provide with my yarn and there's loads of patterns out there for using art yarn or bulky weight yarn um you know uh 
but like I think for a lot of people it can be daunting if they're an otherwise kind of introverted person if they're not like, like it's not an insult to say that not everybody is a creator right or a creative some people just literally want to buy a pattern buy the yarn make a project because it's tactile because it's you know functional that's what they want they want a sweater they want a sweater's worth of yarn in a weight that they can work with to make a sweater that is a color they like and there's nothing wrong with that at all but that being said um i think sometimes when people kind of operate that way they also not everyone but also some sometimes i'd say they can also like be deliberately um in in a box right because that's the mission they they want something exactly as they want it and so then they come across me and my stuff and they they're like what is this and so most of the time it's totally like positive um i had you know a great time yesterday because it was very on brand for usually how shows go for me which is a lot of smiling a lot of giggling a lot of joy a lot of oh wow and you know i get amazing compliments from people about my artistic ability my creative um skill you know like it, just people who appreciate what i do like we all appreciate you know artists that we really like and and i really am blessed to have a lot of that at shows i can say but then there's other times where I I don't know I don't always know how to handle people and sometimes it can baffle me that they're as concerned as they are <laughs> about a certain thing like I've had um the funniest situation so I'll tell you a couple of them so one yarn that I make again and again many times I've made is a yarn with Barbie doll heads in it I've even had a woman make the bottom of her wedding gown like the whole base of her wedding gown from that yarn um, you know and yeah it's different strokes for different folks right and so I've had that one I've made you know yarns that were they were like in the color of bacon like reds browns with little bits of white and they had little felted um over easy eggs in them and it was called bacon and eggs um you know stuff like that so i remember one show i went to where a woman was just dumbfounded she was so upset about the bacon and eggs yarn and you know she <laughs> I have to say I was vegan for about 16 years of my life um, but I wasn't like one of those vegans who tries to make the whole world hate vegans or something by being obnoxious but that was her unfortunately like I felt like she wanted to call PETA on me that day and um, it was really awkward and weird and I just kept saying look it's just yarn but I mean she was also um, against wool and she was very uneducated about how wool is um, how wool is harvested <laughs> i'll just put it that way um you know she had this very nightmarish scenario in her mind about how wool is harvested and um it was also factually incorrect but i didn't really want to like get into that at the time with her so yeah i've had that situation <laughs> which like you know i do my best not to honestly like just laugh about because you don't want to be even rude or more offensive to someone if they feel like they've been you know upset because I don't know I do try to like see other people's point of view but like sometimes you do have to just say like this is so silly like why are you expending so much energy on me um yeah so I would say that you know you get you get your extreme cases like that but usually it's just people who um they have they, I don't think that they know how they sound but like they walk into your booth and they go what do I do with this <laughs> and I mean the question's valid right but like the delivery sometimes it just puts me in such um, a spot where I almost can't answer the question in a like a logical and professional manner like I feel like saying one thing I don't say that thing usually but um you know it, it's like I would never walk into somebody's like thing whatever it is I don't care how wild and be like what is this like ugh, you know like it was just a weird attitude to have so you know I had a couple of those yesterday and I can usually spot them there's this funny thing about 
I don't know, like the stereotypes no one talks about, like that aren't real stereotypes, but like when you've been doing um, like shows and stuff like this for as long as I have, you kind of know the type, you, you know the type of person, not from how they look, but you feel it like when they get there the expression on their face the sounds they make their body language you feel it right and so I had a couple of those yesterday and I'm actually kind of happy with myself because I've gotten to the point now where I know how to handle them um and I think I did okay yesterday and I was really good about keeping to um facts right Ugh, what do I do with this oh well it's it's bulky weight yarn that's been made by me it is an artisan yarn and you know like and I explained it and I was not a jerk um so I'm glad and I think you know maybe five out of ten times I guess half the time you can kind of win them over and expand them a little bit but to be honest a lot of times what they do is they just look at you and they walk out and they don't even say anything so that is not an unusual experience. Um, then the other thing that's new is selling journals. Now, this is me just starting bringing journals to, to shows. And I'm starting by bringing them to shows that they're not even necessarily belonging to, right? It's like a fiber show, but I'm bringing journals because some of them are fiber related. And this particular show... Um, one sec they allow you to bring things beyond just the simplistic theme of fiber arts so um you know it's it's not as strict some are very strict but <laughs> I did have a lot of questions yesterday um, about the journals, but mostly people just loved them. Although I have to say, if I were asked to point out one challenge about, well, a few challenges, but the main one about selling journals um, at a show is that people look at them, they want to take pictures of them in detail, and they want to make them themselves. I mean, that's exciting, and I'm happy to inspire people that way. That's the whole reason I do a YouTube channel. Um, but like, for someone who's looking to sell something that's not the best environment to be in and it was really funny because you know I've experienced this in the past with my yarn like I've gotten to a point like um where people will ask me a million questions how did you do this what did you do yada yada you know like all these different things because they what wheel do you use you know and most of the time I have no issue answering any of those questions um you know but like I've stopped as a creator actually giving out my techniques on how I do things because you know I used to teach um, art yarn spinning classes and I, um, I haven't done that in a while because I'm just very busy right now um, but like that was kind of one way that I felt a little better about sharing all of the knowledge like you know I just think people need to kind of take it down a notch you know when you see something you like if your if your immediate reaction internally is i want to do this myself i want to learn all this so that's okay but if it's also like i want to sell this too i want to do this exact same thing i think sometimes there's this internal thing that like you don't always recognize when you're doing that like especially if you are a seller of you know other work or something because i gotta tell you like it can come off as pretty brash a lot of the time like um i don't know so yeah i i've started to say to people sorry that's one of my um you know industry secrets it's taken me decades to learn this or that and i'm just going to keep it it's part of my signature um so yeah i feel better that i have a way to answer that but i had a really cool cool customer yesterday she was really awesome and so one of the things people often ask me is um you know when you have a yarn that has something in it like you know that's a, like say a ball of like um, I don't know like a, a felt ball or a silk flower or something like that or something even you know more um weird like a, a doll head or something they say well okay so I like the yarn but like what do I do when I'm knitting and I get to that thing how do I make it work right so I, I always explain it the same way I say well you know you'll find when you get to it all you have to do is 
just keep on knitting flip it to the right side of the project so you don't get it like if you're making say you know a sweater or a hat or whatever you don't want to trap it on the inside of the project you want to keep it on the outside so just you know make sure the next row you go across it's still on the outside you're knitting behind it right and then this lady just said to me just in a one-liner she's like oh like a stitch marker and it was like my mind I just felt this like boom I'm like oh my gosh I said exactly like a stitch marker like you nailed it you know so yeah she's awesome and I love people like that you know I've not known many people in my life but I've had um, I had a manager not long ago and he was that person I always said to him you know you have a way of taking a thousand words making them ten words and they make sense like that is your skill <laughs> and that for me that was her for sure that was her skill and I just said you nailed it thank you and she's like oh I don't often nail things I don't believe her I bet you she does this all the time and she doesn't even realize because you know people like who think that way they they are like they think that way <laughs> okay so rambling aside we have clusters yay okay those are done so let's move on I want to do this thing um I need some like little things that are cut out so see these pages right I want to use them as signatures in my fairy journals and what I want to do let me see if I have I'm just going to set all the rest of the Tuesday 10 aside for a second here there we go um mm -hmm. I need to grab some stuff hold on I've got like bags and bags of fussy cuts over here so what I want to do is I want to add like on both sides some kind of a rim like a like um, an edging of stuff that will be at the top so I don't want to go super high because I don't want it to like be coming out of the journal but I want it to be a fun collage so let's just get started by grabbing some stuff I'll start with these mushrooms. So I know that I have a decent amount of height available to me above the height of this paper in some of the journals. So I'm not, you know, super worried about it sticking out. So let's just get started here. And we'll put mushrooms right like this. Okay. And then, um, okay, so it was the other thing. So then also, a woman had a really cool bit of insight for me. She said, you know, I love your yarn. I buy it all the time from a local store that you sell it at. And, you know, I, I, you know, she was telling me all the different things that she's making and her process. And I said, wow, like, I wish more people had brains like you where you're not afraid right to just jump in and do something cool and you know creative even if you know like you're not 100% convinced that you you're gonna do it you know I like that you try and like you figure it out right so she said you know what it is she said it's it's hard because you buy something that you feel is just so beautiful and she said for me the project that I'm working on it's um multi-stranded and it's weaving and I had to realize that I couldn't do what I wanted to do without cutting your yarn and that was the hardest thing for me is I felt like I don't want to take this beautiful thing and like destroy it and I'm so stressed about it and so you know she explained to me how kind of that's the mental leap right like so there's people who are introverted about taking risks and that's acceptable and then there's also you know the whole concept of like I don't want to ruin this thing this treasure and you know for me I think that that's a big thing to understand like you know it's kind of like hearing that gives you more um, empathy not that you're feeling you know like mad or mean at people about the way they do things but it gives you a little more empathy for people who may not necessarily understand like how to take something they've never seen before and just use it and and also to spend the money on it right so yeah that was really nice perspective to get from people and I, I really love that because um, sometimes I think for people who are like creatives right we just go yep this makes sense to me and you know it's almost like you're too you're too close to it to, to see what could be um, 
hard to understand about it. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, those were good mental moments for me to, to experience with smart, awesome people. Okay, so we've got one side here. I'm gonna ink afterward, but now we have to deal with all these raggedy edges. So, I'm just gonna um, figure out how I wanna do that. Now I've got a couple options. One is doing the same thing on this side, and then one would be using some other kind of like paper. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just kind of go like this and then I'm thinking like having this inked in green or brown on the back would make it blend in really well so that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to choose green. I've got oxide here in mode lawn so the top of this we're just gonna go along the top and we're just gonna heavily ink in green. Cause then it's gonna look, you know, like it could be a leaf or foliage or whatever. And we can go back and we can add more to that if we want to. So let's start with this one. This out of the way. But yeah, I always love going to shows cause I just get to see and meet so many cool people and like talk to people, it's so nice. I was also really happy because like everyone pretty much um, at the show that was a vendor had masks on and a lot of the customers had masks on and that made me feel good because I always feel way way more comfortable when people have masks on okay so now I'll add this here perfect and we're gonna go back and ink a little more afterward um, now I need some more little things I feel like this might be a bit of a long Tuesday 10 because I've got a lot of projects that I'm already doing here that are a little time consuming. It's okay though. So what else? So I took a lot of nice walks, had a lot of fun at the beach um, with my kiddos. They had a blast. The nice thing too is during the show yesterday, so my husband was on child child minding duty and um you know while I was at the show but the cool thing is is there's like a museum right where we were doing the show and they had like a whole day of kids events it was like an all day like kids events kind of thing so you know it was perfect because there were all these people you know that were there and they were like entertaining the kids they had like all these out it was all outdoors at all outdoor activities and um my kids got to like blow big bubbles outside and they got to um oh, there so many activities i'm trying to remember everything that they did because there was a lot um they got to um I think there were some animals there there was oh my daughter got to pet like 10 dogs she was really happy because she's a dog fanatic she loves dogs and so she got to pet a lot of dogs and then they got to go in the museum and like look around at, at different things and they got to like play games there was like these this kind of a track that they set up for kids with like pool noodles above it and it was like a little um kind of like a little what's the word I'm looking for uh, like a course they could go through and so yeah they had a great time and then my friends who live in that area or they have a cottage there they came to visit and that was nice and the kids got to see them and that's always a lot of fun and then my parents came to return our dog because they looked after Toasty my little dog while we were on vacation and so they got to see the grandkids and they you know had a nice day they got to have ice cream and um they were so tuckered out my son like he was just he slept for so long yesterday evening he was just wiped out because of all the excitement and fun and then we had the long drive home and the kids were mostly sleepy which was good because i think they would have been you know tired of being in the car if they weren't so sleepy 
because one thing about having small kids is it takes a little longer to go most places because like you have to make more stops but it's actually like I've learned that's not a bad thing you know sometimes we as adults we tend to push our bodies a little further than we should and we get all like uncomfortable and we just ignore it and we just keep driving and then by the time you finally stop your body's all achy because you've been sitting still for so long so yeah that's something that children teach you is like get out stretch okay so I've just got to cut a little here there we go that I had over the outside I could have wrapped it around but I don't want to all right so inking is done yay that's pretty fun right it's like a nice um um whatchamacallit like what's the word I'm looking for freeform sort of shaped page has a nice border yay I like that a lot so that's actually a new good idea <laughs> that's going into my new good ideas box okay let's put that over here that's other another no stitch project too I'll get rid of these sticky inky pages now should I do the other page or should I spend my Tuesday 10 time on another thing? You know, I think we can do it pretty quick, right? That wasn't too time consuming. Let's just do it the other one and then it will be finished. So let's choose a fairy for this side. Probably just put like one fairy on either side. Pink, let's go with, oh, I love the thistle fairy. So let's just, um, tear away the excess that's curling over here and we'll start with the thistle fairy oh, and the other thing that's really fun about going to um fiber shows and yarn shows seeing everybody's really cool gear that they wear so it's like people tend to you know wear their kind of festival like clothes like they things that they've knit or crocheted or woven or whatever so you get to see all these cool like you know beautiful projects that people have made and um yeah I felt like all day I was like I like your sweater I love your shawl that's a great scarf like, <laughs> but it's true like they're just beautiful like things that people make okay we need more florals for the other side. I like that white one actually. That's kind of cute. Would that be okay like that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then my my load in and out was not too bad. My load in was a little hard because I was all by myself and I didn't have everything packed the night before but um because I had to like we did this weird like we left from where we were vacationing drove down to like the show with half the stuff that I needed to pack um that I picked up on the Tuesday and come back when my daughter had her sparks meeting so like I had half my stuff like the bones of my setup that I did the night before and then the next morning I did the rest and I would say I had just enough time I, I cut it a little close for comfort I think you know what I don't think I need to put anything here this isn't messy so let's just flip to the other side and focus on just filling this in a little bit um yeah so I think they wanted to have a vendor meeting at 9 30 and we opened the show at 10 and I think I was like kind of you know I wasn't over at the vendor meeting but it was actually happening right in front of where my booth was so I got to keep keep on keeping on until the very end and that is like stressful for me because I'm usually done like way 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 ahead of time so I was a little bit like oh goodness <laughs> am I gonna finish and I finished it was fine and then um, it got really busy in the afternoon. And like the year before, the last year I did this, which was like, I wanna say two, three years ago, this particular show, um, we had the lovely Boy Scouts volunteering, like with all sorts of things from like relieving us for breaks for the washroom to like um, directing uh, traffic in the parking lot. I need to bring this down a little further. Um, so this year they weren't available unfortunately so we didn't have such 
frequent access to brakes and in the morning I was kind of um I was waiting desperately for a bio break <laughs> but I finally got one I was like okay I was gonna float away there for a minute but I was okay and then they covered for me which was great and I got to carry on the rest of the day and it was all good and then um the loadout was nice because my parents were there so my mom stayed with the kiddos and then my dad helped us to load everything out which was great oh yeah she goes really pretty there okay and then everything got all packed up and it was nice and then since the show I've gotten some really nice messages from people which is great people that I haven't talked to in a while and that I just met and connected with. I always enjoy that. Okay, fairies on. Let's begin the inking process. We get rid of all this white. This one I want to heavily kind of ink. It's got a lot of white and I want it to be a little greener. There we go, this one. Yeah, they just look like leaves. It's perfect. Go around the white on this fussy cut as well. It also helps that this page is green. I think if I were using like a white page, maybe I'd use the vintage photo too, which could be nice. You just wouldn't want to have as much dramatic like um, ridging as I do, like with the images on the back. But this page is white and I'm just going to like go around it in the same way and actually you know you could go over the entire page you could use a stencil like what if you know you had a lattice stencil and you came down stenciling that way that would be really nice this needs more glue I think I missed her foot there we go it's down Hey. Yay, those are fun pages. Whee! See? Alright, so let's set those aside. Then we'll move on to the next thing. I'll get these fussy cuts out of here. Put the ink away. These little tabs out of here. We might use those. I don't know. Just put the pin back in the glue. Okay. The thread from my jar over here is just coming at me. All right, let's go with this. So there's this beautiful bird here. The sun broke through, the sky turned blue, a rainbow surrounded them all. Speaking of which, hold on, I gotta show you this. We saw a double rainbow, a giant double rainbow yesterday. Oh my gosh, it was beautiful. Let me just pull up my picture of it so I can show you. It was, um, here we go. So this is just, hopefully you can see this. Let me just come up, look at my camera. Okay, you can see this, right? Okay, so that's the single rainbow. Now let me show you how it was a double rainbow. So there you see like a light post. So see one rainbow, two rainbows. And it made me think about, I don't know if you saw that video from years ago where there was like this man who he saw a double rainbow and he made this hilarious video. It's just like him freaking out about a double rainbow. He was having like an out of body experience type moment about it. It was really funny and it definitely <laughs> took me back to that moment and my husband who's a comedian and he was kind of acting the whole thing out. <laughs> <laughs> As my kids sat there looking at him like, what are we doing, Dad? I'm going to just get rid of the, this part of the tail here. I think I want to get rid of this white. Okay. I feel like I need a fussy cut fairy for this. Um, but I might also use these words. The sun broke through. The sky turned blue. A rainbow surrounded them all. That's pretty. So let's just tear, tear this. Um, there we go. Oops. Can I tear down this middle? Let's see. 
There we go. I'll put those aside. Then I need to find like maybe a fairy. I'm so glad I fussy cut all these fairies because I, yay, I like that one. I've needed them so much, although I like yellow too. Oh, I like yellow better. Um, I have really needed a lot of fussy cut fairies for this project. All these little projects I've been doing. And you know, there aren't that many digitals of fussy cut fairies on Etsy. I was surprised. So if you're a digital creator, this is in your illustrator would be even cooler. So it wasn't all just like the same, you know, either Cicely Mary Barker or you know, scans of like Victorian dolls that have wings added or something. You could um, really, I think, sell your work that way if you did that kind of work. All right, I need a yellowy ink. So please pardon my reach. <laughs> I'm going to get my mustard seed here. And then I need, um, I'll use this one. Just kind of clean it out. I don't have an inker specifically for yellow. I don't have ink like inkers that I keep for every single color. It's just it would be too much on my desk and surrounding my desk. It's also last night I was so tired. I started watching um, Tim Holtz's like taped live of the Stampers Anonymous 2022 products. Um, I was watching a bit of that. I thought that the, I don't know if you've seen it, if you're watching this and you've seen it, um, but I thought that the Bubbles stamp looked kind of nice and also I thought that the, um, like the stamp that's kind of like his field notes set, the, the other one that he's done, looked kind of cool and it was neat to see him using the whole entire stamp as a, as a big stamp rather than like separating them out. But it also got me thinking because he was talking about like, you know, it's cool to use like the big stamp with all the little stamps on it as one piece and then you can just, you know, tear it all out and you're not having to deal with one little individual stamp. I totally think that's a good way of thinking. But it also made me think about how many scraps of things I have that I've made or that are labels that, you know, or things that I myself could design. I could like make those kind of sheets for myself. Um, so yeah, I am going to plan to do some of that. I mean, I'm already planning definitely for the fairy project. I'm going to probably create some of my own digital things like verses, like different stuff. I don't know. I haven't totally put my thoughts into it yet. I'm kind of hoping though now that I'm not doing like shows that I'll have more time to work on like design work like for digitals and things like that but yeah I'll see I've had a lot of things like that that I've had like on the back shelf that um hopefully one day I will get done but I do have to do an Etsy shop update really soon I've got a bit of leftover yarn from the show I mean a lot of it sold for sure um I don't have like a ton but I have a little bit left um, and I'll get it up there because I actually do want to have a little Etsy update of yarn too because I know what ends up happening is I usually get a lot of customers that will come back to me and say oh you know I was over budget so I didn't buy that yarn yesterday and you know do you still have it so before that happens <laughs> I'll try to get it up on Etsy so that like everyone has a chance oh dear Look what I did. I put the ugly paper on the back. Ooh. Instead, let's just peel this both off. There we go. And we will re-glue. I'm trying to use up this ugly scrapbook paper. <laughs> there we go. That's more like it. Were you noticing that and yelling at me like, no, don't do it. Yep. Okay, there we go. Now we'll cut this out again. Be 
Yeah, it's kind of the middle of the day today, and I think I'm probably going to get out for a walk, even though it's a rainy day. I need to stay on my daily walk, 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 because it's good. All right, so then I held this back here. A rainbow surrounded them all. The sun broke through. Okay. The sky turned blue. Yeah, let's do that. I wanted to make this a tag. I'll see if I still can once I get the words on. I don't want to cut into the words. Fun, fun. Do I have... I know I've got blue ink. I just don't have it down here, maybe. Oh, no. I have three stacks of inks here. This is just... I really need to spend a bit of time soon um, truly working on my studio reorg because I got this really great shelf and I really want to put it to use because I need it. <laughs> Add a little bit. I need a little bit of blue. Let's just finger tool. There we go. Um, yeah, I want to put this new shelf to use because it's going to be perfect. I'm going to organize like my stamps, my inks, my everything. I'm going to reorganize. All right. Those are all good. They can all stay together. Okay. And we'll flip them back upside down. There we go. Then we'll make this into a tag, I think. Let's just start with this side because this is the side where I don't want to cut into the T. Here we go. And then we will stitch that. I'm not going to put any kind of a like um, a topper on it. I like it as is. All right, set this aside. Now we need to get cracking. I, I'm probably not going to finish tan. I've been way too much of a jabber jaw today. All right, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to tackle this. So my thoughts on this is it's a whole story. Uh, it's not the dancing fairies though. It's actually this one. It's the fairies cake. And I'm thinking I want to keep it all together and have the whole the fairy's cake story. Um, but on the back, I've got to cover this and I've got to cover this. So let's start with this one, maybe. Um, and then I would stitch it together down the side and maybe do it like a fold in. Um, what is my husband sending to me here? Let's just double check. It's not important. Okay. He's sending me garden photos. Oh, I think these are my mulberry trees. I think they're actually going to grow berries this year. That's what it is. I've been very upset because my mulberry trees are not going to grow berries for three years, and it's been three years because um, they're they're new trees. So yeah, I think they're finally going to get berries this year. So he's probably sending me that like, okay, calm down. They're going to get berries. All right. So what do we want to cover here? I love these guys. I'm trying to decide. I think I could leave them in, right? On a fairy journal. Why not? All right. I need paper. Um, and what I'm thinking is, hold on. Okay. I've got this kind of pinky and browny colored paper that I dyed, and I think it would be really cute if I just um, wantonly tore 
large pieces and glued them on. I was watching a video the other day um, from Teal, Teal and Tattered. And you know, I love, I love her so much. I love her style. And I liked that when she's talking about how she does collages, um, when she's getting started, she actually uses big pieces to cover the whole, you know, area that, um, that she wants to collage on. She doesn't like mess around with little pieces because she finds it overwhelming. And I was like, that is genius. You're a genius. And it's so true because I get really overwhelmed when I'm trying to collage and I've got like something in the background that I'm, you know, collaging on like an ugly surface. And yeah, why mess around with little bits, right? You don't need to. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create writing space with this fun dyed paper. Like so, and just leave a little gap there. I did once a whole, a whole entire book cover in like torn little pieces of eco printed paper or like dyed paper like this. And it really turned out beautifully. So I've got high hopes for this as well being good. Okay, there we go. And use thin paper and glue stick to get that nice flat um, finish. Now we've got this this down here I need to cover. You see that, that name? So I'm going to do the same thing with that. And I'm just going to do it like, almost like this might be like a cloud because she's sleeping. We'll do a little cloud there. And you know, obviously you could use blue to make the image more like a cloud, but I'm just going to do my thing like this. Then over here, I'm going to cut this off. Okay. So there we go. We have writing space on this page. Um, let's move these out of the way. So this is the first page of the story. This is the second page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hold on. No, this is the second page, I think. I'm getting my pages out of order. Ah! I hate when they don't all have page numbers. So this is page six. This is page seven. Okay, six and seven. And so that, yeah, four and five, okay. That goes together. We have nothing to do to that. We have nothing to do with that. We just need to now cover up this whole page here. And I'm going to leave these fairies at the bottom. So let's just do the same thing again. Big pieces of paper. Okay. Good. I'm just going to check my battery and make sure I'm not dead. Uh, I'm not dead, but I'm going to change batteries. Give me one minute. Okay, I'm back. So it's a good thing I checked because I had 3% battery left. <laughs> so let's not do that. Okay. This Tuesday 10 is going to be a little longer. I know that much. But that's okay. All right, now let's do this one a little. How much do we want here? Back to that. A little bit off. But I really want to try to finish these 10 pieces. <laughs> I think I can do it. I don't think it'll be too bad. Maybe a little like over an hour. I see lots of people do videos commonly that are that long, so. But I'm not going to beat myself up about it. Um, I cut that one too short. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. None of those will work for that spot. I need a different piece of paper. Okay, right here. By right here. All right. That's better. Yeah. Okay. Let's get these out of the way. I'm in the scrap bin. Glue this one. Okay. All 
All right, so now we have this. These are going to go together. I'm going to stitch down the side and then fold it, and that's gonna be like a really fun journal, like tuck in probably into the back, the front, or the center as just a bonus um, large kind of piece of ephemera with a story included, because I like that. Okay, so now we have this. This is the um, the front page of the Fairyopolis book. So what does it say here? The Walden's Croydon, Surrey, British Fairy Folklore Society. Um, <laughs> yes, okay, so this is her letter that, like, she wrote about her fairy adventures. So I think what I'll do... I don't know if I can tear this. Will this tear? Yeah, it will. Okay, I'm gonna tear it. Fair. I'm not going to include her on this, by the way. Okay, there we go. There's the letter. Now, there we go. Oops. Bottom of the bag. I want to use paper bag. into this paper bag like you're a savage. That's the way to do this technique if you're wondering. <laughs> ah, I'm feeling this big giant things. Okay. Alright. <laughs> now, here we go. We have paper bag. Um, I would like to use the part that doesn't have seams. Okay, so let's get the glue stick and we're going to give this a really generous glue. Okay, and then get any little bits that are already flapped up on the back here. We'll just keep all that on there. It's all good. Okay, plunk that down. Actually, not right there, over here, because the rip, I don't want that rip. Okay. Smooth this bit down where there's a little tear. My hands are too gluey. All right, now I want to go around and tear the bag, just giving it like a little border. I want this to be kind of like a tattered letter that was saved for a long time. And then I'm gonna scrunch it up gently. I know this is stressing you out. I know. And we're gonna gently, gently unfold it again. Okay, we've added this this scrunch to it because it is a letter that was lost and found, you see? I'm gonna take my vintage photo inker that I haven't even re-inked, and I'm just gonna go over these creases. And I'm also gonna just hit the paper core a little, not in an obsessive way, just, you know, Use up that last bit of ink on your inker. Okay, so now we have, oh, I must see my inker in the recycling. Now we have this, 
the wild abandon has uh, taken over. We have this tattered letter. Now, um, I have a couple options. So the back, obviously writing space. Um, I'm just gonna tear this little bit of white off here. And I think what I wanna do with this is, I want to add some stitching around it just to keep it nice and strong. So that's what I'll do at the end. Um, so let's set that aside and it will go in the stitching pile. I don't have a lot to stitch today though. Okay. So then we have this leftover. So where is my handy dandy tab punch? Grab some more of those tabs. Um, maybe another one from down here. Okay, and then we have this little fairy girl here. And why don't we make kind of an accompanying piece that looks the same as the letter. So just again, like a rough, you know, these are the kind of fun things that you think nothing of right now, but once you stitch around it, and then you have it in your bin, of things that you've made, it's actually going to be a lot cooler than you realize. It's kind of like a cluster. Okay. And we'll stitch up that one as well. And I could also add maybe some words on this one. What do we have here? A place of magical things. Let's do that. We'll just cut that in half. And then why don't we just um, put a little bit of gold over here, a little gilding wax. Okay. And then we'll just um, add a little ink. This thing's almost completely dry. Let's try this one. Yeah, it's got some green, perfect, that's nice. Okay, so now we have that little clustery piece. All right, what are we left with? Oh yeah, this. All right, I still have three pieces. So let's do this one first. This one is very easy. I'm just literally going to cover the back, I think. Um, now, what I'm questioning is, what I might do, like I was thinking just cover the entire back um, and make it stationary. But I've decided now, I think, I wanna use scrap paper and just cover this for writing space and still use it as stationary, but maintain this lovely picture up here too. Um, do I have any more paper? Let me see. Hmm. I do. So here we go, we still have this. So let's just measure what we would want, probably this much. Then, yep, here, yep, and here. I'm just gonna measure it to the, the window in here, right? I'll ink this up, or not ink, glue. Okay. And that's just a magical little piece of stationery that will go inside here. And I'll just fold it in half as so, and you'll be like, oh, look how cute this is. And then when you, when you bring it open, you know, maybe I'll tuck it over a page with a clip on it, but then when you open it, you're like, oh yay, look at her. And you have this beautiful piece of art. So that is done. Now we have this. Um, and what I really liked about it was that this border, but you know, I say this often, which is that um, typically Tuesday 10 goes better when I combine the pieces together. This is just from something else I'm working on. So I think instead of covering it just with paper, I'm going to use this fairy on the inside from this coloring book. I'm just gonna tear it out here. Okay, 
I want the bee. Um, how can I fit this? Maybe like that. And then I gotta lose a little over here. Okay, good. And then I need a couple other things to put in the back. Um, maybe some of this. Just some digital that I've got hanging about here. Let's see how this works here. And down here. Okay, let's glue this all down. And then we will play with it a little bit more. And these are, this is our last couple pieces. So no stress, we've got this. So let's just sort of gently lay that there and then put our other two pieces on. thing is down. Then, um, just trim these edges. Okay. And we have this. So this needs paint. One okay. My drinking water, hold on. <laughs> I was painting earlier today, so this was just at hand, which is good. Let's get the watercolors. I'm just gonna use my little fine text set here that gives me limitations on what I can do. So, first of all, we have this bee, and I'm just going to add some gold. I know that bees are usually yellow, but this one is gold. And what is this? That is a little glove that I don't need there. Is there anything else I want to be gold? Maybe the hair? So let's just fill the hair in. watching a Rachel Maxi video this morning and she made a Jeff Goldblum skirt to go to like a Jurassic Park film at the theater. It was amazing and she is hilarious and I think if you've never seen Rachel Maxi you should check her out. She's hilarious. I love her. Okay. A little bit of pink for the lips. And then I think the flowers maybe would be a nice pink as well. we'll. Try to get a little more water on there. There we go. The other option with this is I could just really have left it for, um, you know, whoever purchases this journal they could color it but I kind of do um I've done some pages like full pages of the coloring book in the journals so I figure they'll have those that's all the flowers maybe maybe we'll do the dress a little pinky too Not quite as pigmented, but a little bit. Just kind of keeping it a little like painterly, linear, you know, not trying to fill everything exactly. Okay. Then there's like a little collar in inside this collar. We'll do that. We'll add a little bit of pink on the cheek. 
And I'll take a bit of gold and a bit of maybe this. Let's see what we have here. That's a good tone, I think, for this fairy's skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the wings will make them like a little bit of a different color. They'll be like a little bit diaphanous. And I'll just do outlines maybe. Kind of going over and around the lines. Okay. A little bit of gold to do this stem. And then maybe also just add some gold around these black details on this collar. And then color we haven't really used yet to just kind of add a little bit of color in the wing not very much okay that is the painting complete then I want a bit of yellow maybe ink let me see or I have another idea hold on I'm just knocking over my paper cutter over here. And now I need to shake, shake, shake this spray. This is mixed media spray, um, art spray from Marabou. This color is silver 82. And I'm just gonna pick this up for a sec and just give it a few sprays. There we go. Then we need to dry this. So let's do that quick. This dries pretty quick. it as well. Oop. Okay, so hopefully you can see that this is like really shiny and iridescent now. That's what I was going for. Now we need to um, probably back it. And what I see this doing is being a flip. So I'm going to get more of that packaging paper. Now, let me see, is there a seam on there? There is, okay. Right, so what I'm going to do, I want this to be like a page that will flip in the journal. Um, so I'm going to go and I'm going to do all the stitching that's needed to complete all the pieces and I'll come back and explain this to you. Basically, I'm just going to stitch around it um, and then I'm going to leave a flap over here that will be used to glue down in one of the journals. So I will be right back. Okay, we finally have come to a conclusion here. <laughs> so what did we make? We have all these tabs to be used for later ephemera projects in these journals. So I'll put them in with my other stuff. Um, I stitched around this tag, just um, cut these little threads off. I'm happy with that little one. Then this was that extra kind of cluster that goes with this letter. So I'm gonna leave the threads long on these and these kind of go together. Um, so that's all been stitched around and I think it's a really fun add-in. 
I also decided I would stitch around the clusters just because I love sewing anything in the round that gets to kind of let your machine just go and you just kind of spin and it's a lot of fun. So I stitched around those. Then we have this that didn't get stitched around, but it's just a fun add-in to the journals. And these pages are maybe my favorite of the day, I think. These were a lot of fun and hopefully there's something that inspired you and you'll give them a try. We should call them, we should call them, um, I don't know, like maybe headers, um, header pages, header borders, I don't know. There is the um, piece that I made that, see I made a flip, so I just stitched around and I left a little of the extra brown paper so when I put it into a journal I can glue that down and then I'll have all this writing space and that will flip. And if it ended up being too wide, I could honestly clip it down more and stitch again, but I don't think it will be. The books I'm working with actually are quite wide. Then this is that big storybook. Um, so this is one way, This we, remember we covered this and we covered this. And then I just stitched up the side. Excuse me. <laughs> um, I stitched up the side so that we could keep the whole story together and in order. So it's the fairy's cake and I just wanted to keep that inside the journal. So I've done so and it will just get folded and popped in like the center, you know, somewhere. Um, so that's one way you can use a really big book um, inside of a smaller journal if you're looking to try to keep, you know, the um, some of the you know, story intact. Okay, so let's put all this over here. Then I think I'll choose the journals to put these in. Hold on. Hmm. Okay. The yellow one maybe? Let's try the yellow one and we'll go with maybe the purpley. Or maybe not this one, this one, yeah. Cause it's got some, yeah, let's see. Actually, no, meanie, meanie. I'm gonna go with the purples. Okay, so we'll put this in this journal and see, it will fit in there just fine. And like, it'll look like, you know, what if I, I haven't gotten all my pages in yet, but see, it's gonna split that in half. So you'll have that and you'll have that. So yeah, that's a really fun page. I might make more of those. I might just do a video with just making those. We'll see. <laughs> um, let's see, is this one too tall? Yes. I can't do that one. This one. Yeah, that one's perfect. Okay. So there we go. So again, let me let me just show you. Put a page in there. Get a solid page. Okay. There we go. So that will be really fun. Okay. So that's it for me for today for Tuesday 10. Um, sorry it was a mega Tuesday 10, but you know it's okay. I'm back. And so I'm going to go wash these gluey inky fingers and I will talk to you again very soon. Have a lovely day. Bye for now.